Hello, my name is Emily Webb and I'm here today with my company called Awesome Potential. I'm asking for £75,000 to be invested for 20% in my business. I'm 20 years old and I go to Exeter University and I study business and management. I've been a competitive rower for the last six years. I've represented Wales and I rode at Henley when I was just 16. I wanted to solve a problem of solving blisters on the hands, which is a real problem in the sport of rowing. I have here um, the awesome potential handle. Um, how it works is the first element of the design is the shape. Um, so you um, can see that my skin is uh, not bunched up. The uh, shape actually extends my hand, increases the surface area of the skin, uh, which prevents bunching up and blistering. The second part is the rotating side. This allows the awesome potential grip to be used um, while still maintaining the same technique that you use when you row with a conventional handle. I have shown my designs to a, a former Olympic coach who was a three-time Olympian himself and he believes it has huge potential with um, both reproducing blisters and tendonitis. I hope you think my products have awesome potential and uh, would like to invest in me and my products. Thank you very much. It's a confident pitch from one of the den's youngest entrepreneurs. Emily Webb from Monmouthshire needs a £75,000 investment in her training aid for rowers. Thank you. Hello, Emily. I'm Deborah. Um, did you develop this in conjunction with the university? Do they own any part of this development? No, not at all. This was my um, GCSE design technology project. So it's all yours? It's all mine, yeah. <laughs> And you have a patent on this? Yeah, the patent has been approved in the UK and in the United States of America and it's filed in um, Canada, Germany and Australia. OK, so you've got all your options open at the yeah. moment. OK. How many rowers are there in the UK? In the UK, UK there are 22,000 affiliated rowers. 22,000 affiliated? Yeah. And what, do, what do, does everybody who rows, are they affiliated? Um, probably not everybody. But they're um, the ones who would care enough to...? Yeah, those are the ones that are registered to racing competitions. OK, thanks, Emily. The young student is holding her own, but health club owner Duncan Bannatyne knows this market well. What will he make of Emily's invention? Emily, have you sold any of these yet? Um, we've only sold six units so far. What do they cost you? Um, they cost us uh, well, nearly, nearly six pounds to manufacture. What price do you sell them at? Um, £17.99. Seventeen ninety nine. That's very expensive, I think. And uh, you know, some people might not think the blister is all that important. It's not just about blisters. It's about actually supporting your arm and making you uh, row and perform in a much more natural position. Can you use this in a boat when you're doing competitive rowing? Um, at the moment, we've not been able to do um, mathematical analytical trials. However, what I'm trying to market um, the handle as a aid for training young rowers. Yeah, one of the problems with we're using it as an aid for training is the trainer's hands don't get hardened to it. Yeah. And so when they go to compete yeah. and they use an oar yeah. and they can't use this, yeah. that's when they get the blisters. Yeah. There's nothing in the um, guidelines for the uh, rowing association that says um, you cannot use the awesome potential handle. Um, I've been and met with numerous representatives of the uh, rowing association and none of them have raised any objections at all. Yeah? Yeah. Emily is countering the dragon's concerns well, and James Kahn is ready to explore the potential of her product. If you take away the concept of the rowing machine yeah. and focus on the design of a grip, yeah. could this grip therefore be used on cycles, grips, any type of bar? that you're holding for a long period of time. Yes. Are there any circumstances where that doesn't work? Not to my knowledge, no. And our patent has been improved so it can be used on any form of handle. So if I can show you the next product, which are crutches, the way it works with the crutch is the grip um, is upright. And when you use a crutch and put your weight on it, you can press down on the handle, which actually helps support your weight and acts as a shock absorber. I'm actually in contact with um, one of the largest mobility aid um, distribution companies in the world and I've got letters um, confirming that, that they are interested with me today. The Dragons seem impressed by Emily's product knowledge. Now, Peter Jones wants more financial information from her. Emily, what's, 
What's your sales forecast for the first year? Um, what we have focused on is the um, mobility market. And what's um, that forecast? We are aiming to sell to 6,500 people in the first year. Um, that's based on um, making sales to just 2.5% of the people in the UK that we know will be using crutches. So your target market, Emily, you're saying two to three people out of every hundred people that get currently supplied crutches will immediately think, I need an awesome potential grip. Yes. Because I would doubt, actually, that two and a half percent of the population that use crutches would get to know about your product, let alone think about buying one. OK. Um... What are you going to do with the £75,000? OK, £19,000 on the um, new tool for the uh, crutch market. Um, and then... Um, 18,000 for um, the prototyping and further development. Yeah. And um, the, um, sorry. Thirty-two for working capital. Hold on, 30 to nearly half for working capital, what does that mean? Um, have the awesome types of grips ready for selling to the, to the market. So you're going to buy £32,000 of stock? Oh, sorry, we've put in an order for um, 500 units. And What's the total value of the order? Around £1,000. So I thought you said that was for 500. 400, sorry. 400, well that would be £2,400. That's cost a lot more. Pounds. Emily, are you sure it's £1,000? No. You're not? No. OK. Sorry. <laughs> For the first time, the scrutiny is taking its toll on the young businesswoman. Peter Jones has heard enough. I think, well, Emily, I think we've been very, very polite with you, to be honest. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be pr pretty honest. I think that... I, I don't think you've come in with a very good understanding of your numbers. I don't think you've really thought about how you're going to specifically advertise this product and convince people that actually this is the right thing for them to buy. And I think you're very woolly with regards to using your terminology of working capital. I'm not even sure you know what that means. Listen, I think it's great that you've done something, but I, I do not believe that this product has the potential to return an investment of 75,000, let alone at 20%. Okay. So for that reason, I'm out. Okay, thank you. Let me tell you where I am, Emily. I think what you've done is you've seen a problem, you've found a solution, you've come up with an idea, but I don't think you've spent as much time thinking about the business and saying, can Emily run a business? Can she yeah. manage a business? Um, I am uh, studying a business management degree, second so year. So you're going to carry on with the degree while you're doing this? Um, I have done since I was doing my GCSEs, AS and A-levels. I'm not going to spend 75000 Emily, on somebody who's still doing this evenings and weekends. It's too much money. Regressively, Emily, I'm going to say I'm out. OK. It's a disaster for Emily. Will Deborah Meaden share her rival's concerns? Emily, what I've been sitting here waiting for is to hear about the market that is actually going to make this product. Because what I'm hearing is lots of quite small markets. Okay. Give me one market that's got more than 100,000 people in it. The market for crutches. What um, we would like to do was to um, go into partnership with a distributor. OK. This distributor you're talking to? Yeah. Where are you in that process? Um, we are waiting for um, a conference call um, to happen with the manager of um, the sort of crutches side of their business. Um, as I said, this happened um, fairly recently, um, and as it is a large organisation, it's taking time. However, we do know that they are very interested and we're in regular contact with them. For me to invest, you'd have had to be able to come here today with evidence and stronger evidence than you have. It's not going to be good enough to say, look, you know, we'll have a conference call next week to talk to the person who actually deals with this particular product. I would have needed more evidence okay. to tell me that actually this is the size of the market and this is a good product within that market. So I'm out. Emily? Hi. I can't remember another time in a den 
that I've actually enjoyed just sitting, listening to somebody answering questions to the other dragons. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Every time someone's given you an objection, you've answered it. But the problem is these markets are all so tiny. And I am struggling to see, if I gave you £75,000, how and when I would get it back. Okay. But I'm going to wish you the best of luck. Thank you. But I'm going to have to say, I'm afraid, I'm out. OK, thank you for the opportunity. Good luck. Thank you. Another blow. Now, only Duncan Bannatyne can save Emily from expulsion from the den. Emily, I'll tell you what I am. Okay. Um, I think you're fantastic. Thank you. Um, and it's great to see young entrepreneurs like you come along with ideas. Um, I would like to help you. Um, I could send it to my fitness director to look at them and see if we should stock them. Okay. Um, or even just buy them for our own row machines. Okay, thank you. But as far as making an investment, I can't do it because the company just, I don't see it making the return. So okay. I'm not going to invest, so I'm going to see those terrible, terrible words. Emily, I'm out. OK, thank you. Thank you for Thanks your offer of help. Thank you. Thanks Thank you all. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Emily held her own in the den, but ultimately the dragons couldn't see the potential in her invention. I wish I was that determined at 20. <laughs>